Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity multiplayer tutorial. Today we'll be making it so that we can send our name along when we connect to the server, and then the server will store that for us, and then whenever we have our players load in, we can see the names above our players, and of course you can see it for all the other players too. And by implementing this, we'll be one step closer to creating our lobby, which was the majority vote on the poll I did last week. So in the next tutorial, we'll actually start creating some lobby UI, having players connect and allowing them to ready up. I hope you're looking forward to it, so let's get started. So as always, if you want access to the project, there'll be a link down below to the GitHub repository, as well as links to other relevant pages on the documentation. So for the setup, I've got pretty much the same as we've had previously, but if we look on the UI when I hit play, You'll see here we have one extra text field, so I just duplicated it and moved it up, uh, or down, sorry, and we have one to enter our name. So the password isn't even mandatory, and for the name we can just say Nathan, host, and it currently doesn't do anything, because as you see here above our player, it does have some text, but it just says display name as some default text. So uh, I can still change colors like this and leave, but that's about it. And if I go over to the player prefab, it's the same as usual, except we now have this object above the player, and this has a text component that we can see in the world. So I added this by going right click, 3D object, text mesh pro text, and that's about it. If we go look in the scripts folder, I have a few extras, but we'll see over here we have team player and team picker, those are the same as before. Then we have the player overhead script, which currently just stores reference to the text uh, that's above the player's head, so we'll be coding the rest of this later. And then in the player data script, we just have a struct here that stores a string for the player's name. And obviously with just one property, it doesn't technically need to be a struct, but I know we'll be adding more data in here for the player. So I thought I'd make it a struct now and then later on we can easily just add extra properties to it. And then we have the network manager, which is currently the same as it has been previously, but we'll be modifying that today together. And then we also have the connection payload, I made a class here that's serializable, and it just stores the data that we're going to send across when we connect to the server. Previously we just sent the password, but we want to also send across the name now, and so we just put them both in the same class, and we can then convert between this to an array of bytes, and then back again when we're on the server side, and we'll be doing that together. So that's it for the setup, and now we can start actually doing some coding. So let's close the payload script and open up the network manager, and we'll start off with a way to store data for each client. So we'll have their IDs and then their data such as their name and whatever else we add later. So a good way to do this is to make a dictionary. So we'll make a private and we're going to make it a static dictionary so that we can easily access it elsewhere. I know it's private but that's because we'll be making a public static method and we'll get to that. So let's make it a dictionary where the key is ulong so we'll be able to store the client IDs and the value will be the player data itself and we'll call this the client data. We need to initialize this dictionary and we want to initialize it every time we start up the server because otherwise it would have lingering data from the previous time we started up the server. So we scroll down to where we start hosting. At the top here we should say uh, client data equals a new dictionary of type ulong player data. Another thing to do when we start hosting is add ourselves to this client data. So we've just reset the dictionary, we've just initialized it. So let's add to it now, client data, and the key is going to be our client ID. So network manager dot singleton dot local client ID. And then the value is some new player data. And we need to pass in our name. Uh, so to do that, we're going to need to read it from the text on the UI. So we'll go up to the top. And just like how we have a password input field, we'll make another for our name input field. And then if we scroll down to wherever we just were on host, we can then say over here, name input fields dot text. So as soon as the uh, host starts hosting, we initialize the dictionary and then add ourselves as the first element. And then if we go down to the client, we need to set the connection data to more than just the password. So we made that payload object earlier. So let's actually pass it in here. So var payload equals and we're going to need this as a string, so we're going to use the JSON utility dot to JSON method, and we can then pass in our own object. So new connection payload. Let's open that up, and all we need to do now is just fill in the data. So the password is equal to the password input field dot text, and 
the player name is equal to the name input field dot text. So we've set up our data. We've then converted it to a string as JSON data, but then we need to convert that into a byte array to send it over the network. So on this next line here, we'll say byte array payload bytes equals, and then we'll just take this method from down here, the encoding.ascii.getBytes, and we'll say here, payload. All that's left to do now is to take this byte array and set that as the connection data, and we're good to go. Let's keep scrolling down, and the next thing we'll need to modify is client disconnected. So on the server side, we say when a client disconnects, we want to remove them from that dictionary so that we only have the clients who are currently connected. So we'll say here, if we are the server, so if network manager .singleton is server, then we want to take client data and remove for this client's ID, the one who just disconnected. And then if we go down to the approval check, we're currently just taking it as a password, but we need to now take it as the connection payload. So the top of this method now, I'll say here string payload is equal to, and then we need to basically just take this. So in reality, we're just changing password to payload here. That's all we're doing. So don't actually need that. And then once we've got the payload, we then want to convert this from a string into that object we made. So var connection payload is equal to JSON utility. And instead of to JSON, we have from JSON, but we need to tell it what type we're actually converting to. So connection payload. And then you pass in the string payload. And now from this connection payload object, we can access the password and the name. So for the approved connection, we can just say connection payload dot password. So in line 119 here, we've already decided whether or not we're going to allow or deny the player's connection based on whether they got the password right. So what we should do on the next line is say if approved connection, so if they are approved, then we'll start calculating their spawn points, though we need to have the uh, defaults, so zero and basically zero for the rotation. We need to have that outside of that if statement, otherwise we'll get an error. Uh, if I put that inside, it would then say on line 139 that they don't exist. So after we've done the switch statement, we can then for this player set client data. So client data, then the key is their client ID. And then the data is new player data and we pass in their name. So their name is from this connection payload, connection payload dot player name. So now when the host starts hosting, they'll add themselves to the client data. And then whenever a client goes through the connection process, it will also add them. So now we store the names for all the players, but we have no way of actually using it. So we want to use it over here in the overhead display to display it on this text. So what we should do is in this script over here in the network manager, make a public method to allow us to do that. So we'll scroll up and put it maybe over here. And I'm going to say public, and this is going to be a static method. So you don't even need reference to the network manager. And all it's going to do here is return some player data. And we'll call it get player data. And then we want to say, take in a ulong client ID so that we can say, give me the data for this client. And all it's going to do is it's going to say, if client data dictionary, so client data dot try get value for this client ID, which is the key. If we do get it, then pass us out using the out keyword, our player data. And all we have to do is, if this is successful, return that player data. And if it's not successful, return null, meaning there is no player data for this client ID. And uh, we can't return null because this is non-nullable. So all we have to do is put a question mark after the type we're returning, and it will allow us to do this. Now let's head over to the overhead display script. And currently we just have the text reference. So we need to update this. And what we should do is we should make a synced variable that we can update on the server side for all the other clients to see. Because the other clients don't actually have this dictionary here. We're going to keep all that data strictly on the server side and only sync what we need to. And in this case, we just need to sync the name here. So we'll make a private network variable string. And we'll call this the display name equals new network variable string. And then we want to on enable, so private void on enable, 
and then we'll also do private void on disable disable we want to subscribe to this changing so whenever it updates we actually then update the ui so we'll say here um display name dot on value changed plus equals and then we'll make a, a method called handle uh, display name changed and i'll copy paste this and unsubscribe in on disable just make sure we always clean up our events and then we'll make this method at the bottom so private void handle display name changed so whenever it updates uh, it will take in a string or two strings for the old display name and a string for the new display name and this is all happy now it's all compiling so all we need to do is say well when it syncs to us a new name let's update the ui so display name text dot text is equal to the new display name the only issue is we don't actually update the display name yet so at the top i'm going to override the network start method now keep in mind we're in a network behavior here because this is on a networked object and it's going to allow us to check if we're the server or a client and it's also allowing us to sync this variable so we're going to say here if we're not the server so if not is server then just return but if we are the server then we want to say okay for the person who whoever owns this go grab their name so we'll say here uh, password network manager dot get player data and we'll pass in the owner client id so we're saying whoever this player is go get their player data and we'll store what it returns so it's returning player data question mark so nullable player data the reason it's doing this is because player data is a struct so it can't be null um, but what this allows us to do is instead of saying if player data is null we can say if player data dot has value and then if it does have value update this networked variable so display name dot value is equal to player data dot value dot player name so instead of checking null you do is has value and then to actually uh, get the data from it you say play data dot value and then you can access the name or you know the password but in this case the name actually not the password sorry because the password is in the connection payload the player data literally just has the name so far but if you had other data then you would also be able to access that here but currently like i said just the name and that's it for the coding because literally all that happens is as a host you put your own data in the dictionary as a client it happens whenever you connect in the approval check and then when your player spawns in and you have your overhead display object it'll then say well if we're the server update the sync var uh, this networked var and then if we aren't the server so if we're not the host then all we do is just wait for the value to be updated and when it is we update the display text let's go back into unity and make sure everything is hooked up correctly so if we go to the player when it's done the player has these scripts on and this is just the same as it has been previously the overhead script has reference to the text so that's fine and if we go back into here and we go to the network manager everything is also fine here but on the ui main we also need to now put in the name input field so i'll open this up go find the input field name and drag that in and now we should be able to test so i'm going to go ahead and hit file build and run and see it in action so now i've done a build and i'll host in the editor you see here we've got the name nathan it's slightly hidden by the color picker but that's fine and then we'll open up the other two windows and connect as dapper and then connect as dino and everything is synced correctly and of course over here on dino i could leave change my name to also dapper let's say and join back and that also syncs as you'd expect so yeah that's it for this tutorial we can now pass data in when we connect to the server that it stores for later and we can have components in our game like the overhead display and it can then grab that data and display it so now we can move on to making the lobby now that we have the names synced we can also grab them display them in the lobby and then we can sync whether the players are ready and only start the game once all the players are ready if you enjoyed this tutorial then be sure to leave a like and subscribe that would help a lot and be sure to share it with anyone else you think that might find it useful Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Francisca Lira, Sahila, Benjamin Hilda, Kat from Garfield, David McDermott, Evan Maxey, Yoris Letter, Casey, Katinka Mom, Lawrence Simpson, Malvin, Mark, Mike Miller, Rack, Ulfgrim, 
Andrew Williams, Chris Diplock, Fury, and Daria. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those or checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. Thanks always for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.